I have brought back a leaf that has powdery mildew. For today's video, I'm gonna do some demonstrations on how I actually handle powdery mildew in the garden once it's there but I also have a corresponding blog post that talks a little bit more about the multi-prong and holistic approach that I take to powdery mildew in the garden. So definitely make sure you click on the link below to check that out. Powdery mildew is a fungal disease. You can actually see that it grows on top of leaves and is like a white powdery covering. So it is different than a disease that actually changes the colors of the leaves in the leaves. This actually sits on top. Powdery mildew has been rampant this year, but in all honesty, it appears every single year that I garden. So if you're new here, hi and welcome. Make sure that you subscribe and hit the notification button so that you don't miss out on future videos. Let me bring this closer. So this is the powdery mildew. You can see what it looks like. It's on the top and it's also on the bottom. Let me show, on the bottom of this leaf. So it's easy sometimes to mistake powdery mildew for discolorations in the leaves, especially with zucchini plants, which I'll take you over and show you. But that is what we're looking for. And I kind of have like maybe a flow chart of things that I do to approach powdery mildew in the season. I talk more about my multi-prong approach to powdery mildew on the blog, but to briefly go over some preventative things, you can A, make sure that your plants have enough space in the garden and that there's good airflow and circulation. And you can also look for plants or seeds that actually have a higher resistance to powdery mildew. Now, these are not plants that will never have powdery mildew, but just in trials, they've been shown to have a higher resistance against it. So those are two preventative things that you can consider if you're worried about powdery mildew in your garden. Also, if you're starting to notice that powdery mildew is setting in really, really early on your seedlings and it's the beginning of the season, you might want to consider heading to a nursery and picking up replacements and just getting rid of those plants. Sometimes in gardening, that's the best thing to do. I'm going to take you over to this squash, which has some really great examples here. So the first example is right here. Is that powdery mildew? The answer is no. So sometimes there are zucchinis or squashes that exhibit veins that look like this, but this is actually not powdery mildew. It is the natural coloration on the squash. So a lot of people think that it's powdery mildew and chop off the perfectly healthy leaves. So I just wanted to show you, look, you can see there's a fruit there, but this is just a natural coloration. There's no powder on it. So sometimes you gotta get up close and take a look. So we're gonna talk about this squash here. What I do is simply remove the leaves and you do not compost the leaves because you don't want those fungal spores ending up in your compost. I just trash the leaves. So, and then try not to shake it all over your garden. Um, you don't want to disperse it all over the place. Um, and you just get rid of the infected leaves. You can even get rid of some of the old leaves. So look at all these leaves. All of these are covered in powdery mildew. I'll take you in closer and show you. Um, so it's gonna look like there's very little leaves left, but really there's gonna be plenty. I could even put a tomato cage on this squash and have it grow vertically if I wanted. Sorry, I found a powdery mildew down there. And there's a little on that stem that I didn't cut all the way. And that is perfectly fine. So there we go. I'm taking you in closer to show you the leaves I removed. Here you can see the powdery mildew along all the back of these squash leaves. There's also some on the front, but this is my pile of leaves that I removed. And look at that, the squash looks great. Nice healthy leaves, baby fruit coming in. Um, ignore the light bulb on the ground. We actually had to take down our string lights um, to do some repairs and they're there because that is our lives. We are far, far too occupied with so many things. Sometimes your plants are young, you notice powdery mildew, and it's the beginning of the season, you know that you need to stave off this disease for the entirety of the season. Um, for example, my dahlias got it when they were really young. Some of my tomatoes got it when they were really young this year. So I couldn't clip off that much foliage. So my next best option is an organic powdery mildew treatment. And I'm gonna share with you what I've been using this year, and it has far outdone any other treatments that I've ever tried.
so it is now my go-to treatment. The milk treatment that I'm talking about today was actually something that I had heard about years ago and I was always turned off by it. I thought spraying milk in your garden, that's gonna stink. I can't do that, that's gonna be gross. So I never tried it. I always kind of wrote it off and I did other things like neem oil. Now I tried neem oil for powdery mildew and I've gotta be really honest, neem oil has such high potential for burning that it just never really worked well for me. With neem oil, I just felt like it was so much work, especially making sure that you didn't burn your plants, that I just kind of stopped using it in my garden. But now with the milk treatment, you actually want to spray it during the day, in the morning, and let the sun shine on it. And it has worked so well for me. I actually came across a gardener on Instagram that she used the milk spray and showed how it can be in the sun and not burn your plants. And at this point, I was actually getting early powdery mildew on my dahlias and on my tomatoes. I was kind of desperate and I'm like, you know what, I'm gonna try this stinky treatment. And for me, it worked so well. It worked wonderfully. My tomatoes have had a great season. My dahlias, dahlias are still alive and putting off blooms profusely. So this milk treatment has been amazing for me, especially because it hasn't burned my plants. To do this powdery mildew treatment, you're gonna need a mixture of 50% water and 50% milk. Now we have whole milk in our fridge, but I haven't tried it with lower percentages of milk before. I have heard though that it does need to be an animal milk. So again, you're just gonna need 50% milk, 50% water and fill a spray bottle and then you're ready to spray. All right, so here is some before footage of the part of the melon patch that I am spraying with this powdery mildew treatment. And I am going to spray this on both the top and the bottom of the leaves. And again, you want to do this in the morning and let the sun shine on the plants the whole day. Now there's mixed, re mixed reviews on exactly why this process actually works. But some people believe that the proteins in the milk interact with the sun and create this antifungal effect. But either way, the key here is you do want to spray it and then let it sit in the sun all day. And here is some footage of the melons just another day or two later. Now, if you did find that you missed some spots, you can actually go back and treat again. That's what's so great about just using this 50% milk, 50% water solution. Um, and I was really happy with the results. I did find some patches that I missed, so I went back and sprayed again. And finally, just to close, it is that time of year where the summer is ending and we're heading into our fall season. So if you've seen my fall seed starting videos, we are basically preparing to turn over the garden for a new season. So at this point, it's not really worth it to try to save any of the plants if they have powdery mildew. It's something where you just want to take them out and prepare for a new season. But either way, I hope that this video gave you a little more confidence when it comes to dealing with powdery mildew in your garden and showing that there are a lot of different options and I hope one of them works for you. Thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you next week.